Good evening, everybody. We are reconvened from closed session. The board took no action during this particular closed session. Uh, at this time, those of you who are willing and able, please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I would hear a motion to adopt tonight's agenda. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Our agenda is adopted. We'll now move on to our regular recognitions segment. And for that, I will turn it over, as always, to Superintendent Johnson. Good evening, Chair Nordeen, board members, and uh, executive team members and guests. Uh, this evening, we have uh, a couple recognitions. Uh, first of all, with Lakeshore, uh, silver level recognition from the RTI Center. Um, this evening, I'd uh, like to recognize Lakeshore for recently receiving state level recognition from our Wisconsin RTI Center for strong systemic implementation in reading, math, and behavior, all three. Lakeshore was one of two schools in the district to be recognized at the silver level in all three. We will uh, recognize that other school uh, probably next month. Um, this evening, after we finish the recognitions uh, to accept our certificate, is our new principal, Jennifer Kish, as well as staff members, Abby Sevland and Betty Chang Moa. So congratulations to Lakeshore. Uh, secondly, I'd like to recognize our EC4T programming. Uh, family engagement is a cornerstone of our ECASD learning, early learning program. Uh, during the 2021-22 school year, families in early learning were offered over 90 hours of engagement opportunities. These opportunities occurred in a variety of locations and times to best meet the needs of families, but were primarily held in the evenings and on Saturdays. Families could attend various workshops, monthly play groups, smart gym activities, book studies, date with dad, nutrition, gardening, literacy events, and much more. In fact, there were 52, or I'm sorry, 62 events scheduled with 34 of them being in person and 28 being virtual. An estimated 1,200 participants took advantage of the events. The end of year carnival was in person for the first time since the pandemic had started and families responded as over 875 people attended and well over 60 early learning staff members put it on. Family engagement was quite impressive. Um, finally, I do have an announcement. Um, the Wisconsin Public Education Network will hold its eighth annual summer summit right here in Eau Claire this week. Um, it will be at North High Thursday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. at North High, hosted by our district, and we have been a longtime network partner. This annual event brings parents, educators, staff, administrators, board members, and community members from all over the state together to connect and tackle some of the most pressing issues facing our students in their public schools. The theme of this year's Summer Summit is Public Schools Unite Us. This is a topic that allows us to dig deeply into everything from civics education to civic engagement and discuss how Wisconsin can work together to support strong public schools that meet the needs of all 800,000 children that are served statewide. This year's summit will highlight the beginning of a video project about our district's alumni who remain or return to start businesses, work, play and contribute to the Eau Claire community in immeasurable ways. This demonstrates that public schools are the heart of our communities. We'd like to thank so many for this opportunity to host but especially Christian Phelps and Chris Hammock Boyle, both instrumental in the public ed network and with such close ties to the district. So at this time, I'd like to meet with our Lakeshore staff and we'll get a picture of you up front if you're okay with that. <laughs> that was, yeah, that looks good. All right, one, two, three. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks.
So this time we'll move on to our public forum. The board provides each registered speaker up to four minutes to address the board. I apologize, I will cut you off after four minutes. Um, we ask that as you come forward, you just state your name and address for the record. And uh, the board does not hear personal complaints of school personnel, nor any person connected with the school system in a public forum. Uh, so our first speaker tonight is Kim Hagen. Thank you, I'm Kim Hagen, 407 Roosevelt Avenue in Eau Claire, and that was very cool. Thank you. Um, President Norton, Superintendent Johnson, distinguished school board members, thank you for the opportunity to address the board to propose, to propose naming um, the central office, the Marvin G. Lansing Administration Building, and designating the main entrance to of Eau Claire North to the John Bowman entrance as per my email to the board members of July 11th of this year. Both individuals dedicated their distinguished careers to the Eau Claire School District. Um, they have a combined total of over 52 years serving students and staff in Eau Claire. Superintendent Sam Davey, <clears throat> His name was added to the Star Avenue Elementary School building in 1949 after the district completed several uh, new elementary schools. Mr. Davey unfortunately died at the age of 52 of a heart attack and did not see the entire completion of his accomplishment. Yet 70 some years later, we still see his name on the school. <clears throat> Superintendent Homer DeLong's name graces our well-planned Vine Street Middle School. Still a beautiful structure after 50 years, that after it opened 50 years ago. Dr. Walter Manns and Dr. Flynn were outstanding school board members. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, wonderful university, excuse me, community citizens. Their contributions for, to the Oak Park School District will remain and continue for decades with two elementary or with elementary schools named after them. UW Eau Claire's history can be seen and felt by walking through the campus, Haas Fine Arts Center, Navy Center, Care Theater, McIntyre Library, Schofield Hall, Ken Anderson Basketball Court, and a plaque along with trees honoring the memory of four Kent State students. Several parks in Eau Claire remind us of our lumber industry. Thanks to Mr. Carson, Mr. Owen, Mr. Wilson, and Mr. Putnam, we continue to benefit from their foresight. The Eau Claire School District can celebrate rich history similar to UW Eau Claire in the city of Eau Claire. We had and currently have outstanding educators um, and, and staff members, not just educators, and staff members. I would encourage the board to look at creative ways of preserving our rich educational heritage by naming the central office after Dr. Lansing and the Oak Park North's main entrance after Mr. Bowman, who by the way has husky blue blood in his veins. Funding, funding is always a problem with the board. I understand that. So if this would happen to, if you would happen to be able to form a committee and approve something like this, um, I'd be willing to work with the necessary school district employees or the building and grounds um, director along with the uh, Eau Claire Schools Foundation to assist and help raising funds for the signage. Finally, please consider the above request along with other ways to preserve our educational history. Entrances, hallways, basketball or tennis courts or simple plaque next to a freshly planted environmental friendly tree would honor deserving staff member past or present. Thank you. I am available by phone, email, or in person. And you guys are appreciated. Thank you, Mr. Hagen. That concludes our public forum for this evening, and we will move on to our regular reports. We'll start as always with budget development committee. That is Commissioner Lyons. Uh, budget development met last on Thursday, June 23rd, uh, following the Baker Tilly presentation. Uh, the meeting involved uh, 
a little bit of planning and thought, uh, giving uh, some consideration to the referendum timeline and to um, identifying what our question will look like. Uh, we are going to meet on Wednesday uh, at 8.30 and we will be continuing that discussion. That's the end of my report. Thank you. Uh, now on to our legislative liaison, Dr. Johnson. The 2022 Legislative Council Study Committee on Shared School District Services has scheduled its first meeting on Wednesday, July 20th at 10 a.m. The study committee is directed to review current barriers to shared administrative or other services between school districts and explore statutory changes or creation of incentives to encourage efficiencies. A new report from the Wisconsin Policy Forum found that Wisconsin hasn't kept pace with national growth in public education spending. Wisconsin spent $12,740 per student on public elementary and secondary education in 2020. According to the latest data released by the U.S. Census Bureau, that's almost 6% below the national average and ranks 25th in the nation for 2020. On Friday, July 1st, the DPI released estimates of the general school aid amounts each public school district will receive for the 2022-23 school year. Eau Claire Area School District is estimated to receive $70,531,893 a 6.22% increase from the 2021-2022 academic school year. On June 27th, the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act broke a nearly 30-year stalemate on Camp Capitol Hill, becoming the first major piece of federal gun reform to clear both chambers since the Brady Bill. It includes a host of programs providing additional federal resources for schools, children, and their families. On June 25th, President Biden signed the Bipartisan Keep Kids Fed Act into law, thereby extending several pandemic era school nutrition waivers. Those waivers first issued by the U.S. Department of Agriculture as the pandemic disrupted operations in 2020 had been set to expire on June 30th. Those 2020 waivers provided school food programs with more flexible nutrition requirements to help them combat supply shortages, offered options such as grabbing gold meals and provided school meal programs with higher than normal reimbursement rates for meals. The waivers also allowed school food authorities to provide free school meals to all students regardless of family income for the first time in U.S. history, which has been extended uh, to the next academic year. Uh, the Wisconsin Department of Justice announced on June 16th that the state's Office of School Safety has begun training 12 Regional Critical Incident Response Teams, CERTs, around the state. According to the Department of Justice, these CERTs are designed to provide all Wisconsin K-12 public, private, charter, and tribal schools with access to a regionally based team to support them if a critical incident ever occurs at their school. Critical incidents in schools include threats or acts of violence, natural disaster, serious injuries to students or staff, suicide, weather-related disasters, community turmoil, intruders, and Amber Alert, and hate crimes. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now move on to this evening's consent agendas. For each of our consent agendas, the board considers the items with one vote without discussion. Board members have been provided background information or have discussed items at previous meetings. Uh, we'll start with the superintendent's consent agenda. Tonight's superintendent's consent agenda includes human resources, employment report, financial report, May 2022, gifts in the amount of $49,340.68 for the period of May 1st, 2022 through May 31st, 2022, payment of all bills in the amount of $6,255,437.31, and net payroll in the amount of four million one hundred ninety five thousand six hundred nine dollars sixty five cents for the period of May 1st, 2022 through May 31st, 2022. Annual approval of curriculum standards, 2022-23 meal prices and property insurance renewal. At this time, I would hear a motion to approve the superintendent's consent agenda. Approved. Second. Terry, if you would please conduct a roll call vote. Commissioner Lyons? Yes. Commissioner Nardine? Yes. Commissioner Zur? Yes. Commissioner Bika? Yes. Commissioner Clements? Yes. Commissioner Farrar? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. 
We'll now move on to the board's consent agenda. Tonight's board consent agenda includes minutes of board meeting June 6th, 2022, minutes of board meeting June 23rd, 2022, and revisions to GC5. I would hear a motion to approve the board's consent agenda. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Thank you. Uh, the remainder of our evening is, developed, is devoted to two board development topics, the major one being a work session on our budding communication plan. So at this time, I will turn over essentially uh, the speaking to Commissioner Zur to lead us through, and then I'm hopeful we can just use our normal jump in when you want to jump in. If it gets chaotic, we'll have people wrecking. But Commissioner Zur, the floor is yours. Great, thanks. Um, so uh, I believe we discussed um, you plan in May, April or May, and uh, at the end of the uh, at the end of the meeting, we uh, commissioners for our alliance and myself uh, agreed to kind of take some of the board's feedback um, and get together and, and sort of discuss it. Part of um, that discussion was, do you want me to be? Oh, there you go. That works. That works. Perfect. Okay. So uh, we did um, end up meeting him. There has been some email communications as well. Um, I did uh, have a meeting with Superintendent Johnson. We briefly discussed um, uh, the annual meeting concept, and uh, there was some email communication with Tom Weber of Sun Prairie School District, who serves um, in a professional capacity, um, actually contracted with school districts to work on communication uh, with their community. So really great resource for us. Um, so just for tonight, um, what we're, what I guess we're, we're going to kind of talk about um, is a standing agenda, a standing agenda item consideration. So I'll kind of explain a little bit more about what uh, what that is. Um, updates on components of the communication plan currently, kind of where they're at, what we discussed, um, and if if either we're ready to make a recommendation, we need some feedback from you, or we still need to um, have further discussion around them. Um, there are a few recommendations that we are ready to make um, for the discussion on some of those key components. And then if you guys have any next steps for us to kind of go back, get together uh, and keep working on it, we will do that. So uh, one of the things we talked about was all sort of, um, you know, if we end up with a community engagement plan, uh, how are we going to sort of remain accountable to one another and to the items on that plan? And so this was something that we um, that we discussed. There was sort of two um, schools of thought within our within our group, and, and we just decided to bring it back to the full board. Um, what what we could do is have you know similar to the legislative update, have a standing agenda item we're pro proposing monthly for this, where we would um, very briefly, without a lot of description, say you know I attend a blank event at this school and. You know, that's it. And we could go around and do that. So it'd be a verbal update on any activities specifically articulated in the communication plan. Um, it just we could verbally update the board on those activities. Um, it would not be a place to provide any detail or minutes or anything like that. It would just simply be the activity um, happened and by who. Uh, the, the second um, sort of option with this was that it could be sort of uh, written. Uh, in, in on a consent uh, as a consent item. So the the tricky part is the board members would have to submit that information and someone would have to compile that information, uh, you know, into a, a report of sorts, to, you know, by a certain deadline. So it does create, whereas, you know, we could just verbally say it uh, in, a, in a meeting, there is a more of a sort of a behind the scenes time um, situation with that. So that's really just to, to keep us all updated on activities related to that plan. So that's um, one item. Do you guys want to talk about these individually? Or should we talk about it all at the end? Personally, I like to get the, the larger picture. The larger picture of it first. Because I think okay. just thinking about these things in concert yeah. might help to inform them. Great. So school ambassadors, um, the text currently written, you guys can you know view that if you'd like to. Um, as part of the component, but um, this was something that we really felt was was a good idea. Um, obviously, there there are still some some questions that we have, but overall, um, 
we felt that we would update the, we were ready to recommend the update from um, visiting that each person uh, applying to a school would visit from you know once to twice per year um, and add some text around uh, having a goal of connecting with the whole school community so it wouldn't necessarily just be a visit um, you know with the principal for example we would want the the board member to um, attend a, a larger event at the school um, and to answer some of the concerns about the board board members feeling that they you know wouldn't shouldn't like attend a, a, a certain event you know graduation or whatever it might be uh, that they are invited to because they're not assigned to that school to add some text in there i'm still encouraging board members to participate however they they you know have whatever their capacity is um, and again the accountability um, would be reported in that um, agenda item this was a uh, city county committees or committee or however we would word that um, liaison I guess maybe would be appropriate um, this was something we discussed at length as well um, currently it's recommended in the plan to be assigned to a board member year um, yearly uh, and that that person would meet with city you know county government entities on demand basically if there was a request for a meeting for a specific purpose that that would uh, take place. We did check with Sun Prairie on this. They they do um, they do network with their city. Um, there is a, a person that on their board assigned to be a city liaison. They do not network with their county um, currently, and on any they don't for any purpose. Um, so we felt again that this was probably ready to go since it's on demand. Um, we, there is no text for the communication plan related to this, and the reason why is because there's no text uh, in any of the other communication plans that I read as drafts. This was just something that was listed uh, as, as on demand. Um, and I think the, the only concern that we really had, I think Commissioner Lyons uh, discussed a bit in our meeting, um, uh, that in that in that text that we would draft for the communication plan, that we would have to probably make some specific mention of of uh, operational interference and what would be the kind of the goal or the purpose of those meetings and how we could keep it the spirit of that within our coherent governance um, our governing culture policies again accountability would be through that um, agenda item so if i if i could so are, are we so we're operationalizing on demand as actually uh, issues concerning to the school board or the district is that is that how on demand is is is, 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 uh, is oper uh, operationalized or what what does i get yeah so like the comment um that came from sun prairie was that the board member was serving on the city planning commission and I thought if I was sitting on the city planning commission representing the board in the district, that I potentially could be in a position to make decisions on behalf of the board and the district or be able to give feedback. And that's where it started to um, kind of get a little foggy in my mind what my role would be if I'm serving on the planning committee, right? Yeah, yeah, that would be outside of the scope of actually governing school, but yes. people, yeah, so. I don't know if this helps or not, but historically we've always had a, a it's, it's goes by the name shared services, which people want to talk about. So this is shared services. Um, I, since I've been on the board, uh, the person assigned to that has never done anything. There has never been any district, city, county interaction as far as I know. I, I probably think maybe the easiest way to take care of this is probably to list it under GC5 board committees. Yeah, under the liaisons. Probably. In the section on liaison and just say shared services. And if I, I can't speak to what on demand has been in the past because it was the person never did anything who had this committee assignment. Not to say it can't happen in the future. I just don't have any examples to give you. 
So I did, um, believe it or not, my first year I was assigned to shared oh, services okay. committee and I did, yeah, I did attempt to find out when they had most recently met and I did ask Maida for minutes and um, of the most recent meetings and she was unable to find them. So I did do something, but it was, very, I mean, in the sense that I was curious um, because I did feel that it was, uh, you know, a potential thing that we should, you know, keep our eyes on anyway. Um, but I, yeah. I did nothing when I served. Oh, you I, I will say that absolutely nothing. <laughs> I guess with my thing, shared services, I'm trying to think when I um, was preparing for tonight, I really tried to think about each of these components within the coherent governance framework to actually try to plug as many of them into what already exists and trying to have something outside or something new or that's why I just said that perhaps the easiest way to take care of this one is just put shared services into GC5 in the liaison component. Uh, I think Dr. Johnson is correct though that we would have to like if, if putting if we put a liaison in there and I think I think Commissioner Lyons you sort of spoke to it too like it becomes a real, uh, could be a real tricky situation because you can't represent the, the, the full board. I mean, it would be one thing to say, yeah, if you, if there are city council members or even uh, you know, the city, uh, Stephanie Hirsch, like recently got in touch with me and said, you know, like, hey, maybe we should get together and talk about something. Um, and I think that's, that's useful, but I think it, I think it will, it will take a level of discipline in that role to, to feel out that the obligation and not to anyway. Is it because at best actually the way you just the example that you gave at best given the governance culture that we adopted, you you're really ex officio there. All, right. all you can actually do is listen and come back and report. Right. So like you have that's 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 really all given given the so you so it, it's kind of one of the your, pre, your presence there is just to listen and report which is, which would which would also which would be good but in terms of if an issue was presented and you're there and as a voting it, as a voting into you would not actually be able to vote until you actually came back and actually had consensus from the school board as as the coherence governance model that we're following. And I, I may be wrong, but I think I've read those awful books like enough <laughs> that I think I probably have that piece. I've got some great books on coherent no. governance that I could loan you if you want a better set, because I love mine. I take another pass, take a pass. All right, so sorry about that. No, that's okay. Um, yeah, happy to discuss them as we go. Uh, so this was something that kind of came up out of out of the blue in our discussion. Um, so we were talking about the kind of what is in there currently as a newsletter. It's currently in the um, communication plan as a newsletter and uh, social media sort of the board basically doing more um, generic community outreach and um, Commissioner Farrar and we, we got on a discussion about um, about Shore, I'm going to say it wrong, Shorewood, yeah. Shorewood School District, um, oh, it's on there, that uh, they have a newspaper column and uh, that is part of kind of their community engagement plan and that they have a, you know, recurring column in their newspaper and that that is something that they do. Um, so this was something that we sort of, there was a lot of interest um, in our little working group about perhaps exploring this plan. Um, and really there's, there, I felt that there was a lot of questions for the board and we just decided that instead of us talking about it as a small group, it was something that you guys probably needed to consider. Um, so yeah, I was probably the one with the most questions or hesitation about just, again, that whole um, speaking for the board and how we would, um, and Commissioner Lyons had, you know, good suggestions on bylines if we really do want to go this way. Um, you know, I think it opens up a lot of, um, of questions for me personally, but it would be great to hear from the board as a whole to, to see what, what you would want us to do with that idea. Key communicator group. Um, so this is, the, this is really the meat of what we talked about. Um, this is just a reminder of what it is, but this is really the meat of what we talked about with, uh, with Sun Prairie on because there was a lot of questions in our small working group about how the key communicator group is formed. 
um, who sits on that, how they are organized. And um, I mean, this really is the item that I have felt from the coherent governance texts and from some of the articles published in you know Aspen Group's website and other um, you know things that they've put out this is really the the cornerstone of their um, community outreach recommendations for coherent governance boards and so um, and this was uh, as suspected um, the cornerstone of what Sun Prairie is doing as well so what we really decided is that we wanted to hear um, from a school district that was using this um, and to answer a lot of the questions. So the group is uh, basically the key communicator group was formed in Sun Prairie um, by the board and they basically identified key uh, community players in the lives of children. And that's what one thing that came through. I don't know if you guys managed to read the email from Sun Prairie, but really, um, you know, they stay focused on kids. That's, you know, that that's where they're at all the time. And so I think that that's who makes up their group. Um, and, and it was inspiring um, to hear Tom talk about it. Uh, this seemed like something that was really high priority for us as a working group, um, both to figure it out and, and to lift it off the ground. And so um, really felt like perhaps what, if, if we wanted to move forward with key communicator group, perhaps what we could do is just try out forming a list. Who would those people be for us? Um, who would those people be for our community? Um, you know, the one thing that came out of the email from Sun Prairie very specifically was this is work of the board. This is not work of the administration. The administration isn't even there. It is definitely the board's work to inform results monitoring and to, and to in, inform, you know, the direction of the district. And I think of it, um, you know, one of the things that that Mike and I chatted about was strategic planning and how really our coherent governance policies are our strategic plan if done, you know, well and correctly. Um, but part of that strategic planning process for the board um, and for the district, but for the board as well, is community involvement. Uh, and so this is really kind of how you keep your finger on the pulse of the community um, as we're monitoring uh, the progress of our district towards, you know, towards our community's goals. So we really felt that perhaps the best next thing was to just try out a list um, and all of us could sort of bring, I mean, you could bring as many as you want. I think we would aim for five to seven a piece and see, obviously there's going to be overlap. We're probably all going to come to this with the same folks in mind. Um, but, you know, one of the things Tom talked about and one of my questions specifically for him was how do you, uh, how do you engage under engaged populations in this type of work? Um, and, you know, I think we're sharing in we're sharing in that endeavor and we're sharing in that work. So I think, um, you know, if this is something we move forward with, uh, we keep, you know, kids and and also groups uh, of individuals in our community who perhaps um, are really involved in the lives of children, but who don't engage with us or are not as engaged um, with the work of the school district, how can we bring them in, in and empower them to be part of our conversation? Um, one, you know, I think our working group probably needs to come back and figure out what those meetings would look like. Um, what would a what would a draft agenda be? How you know frequent would the meetings be? I think some prairie they're three to four times a year, so quarterly. Um, and I'm not sure if they're meeting during the summer. But that's really, I, you know, of everything in the communication plan, it's the one thing that I felt uh, very from very early on was a, a really, I think, a really great fit for, for us as a as a district. Um, did they did they mention uh I, I, I hate to continue. No, actually I don't. It's just because this is who I am. But it, could you uh could you speak to it just a little bit about like that the key community players because I guess the challenge that potentially the, the makeup of the board probably would run into and, and I think Missouri you kind of said it yourself that in identifying five or seven people that some of us would identify the same five or seven mm -hmm. and I think in the spirit of actually this particular group uh, 
it, it, it would be idea that the representation uh, uh, would be not only those underserved or those who uh, minimally or uh, atypically participate and engage in this, but also those individuals who do engage, but actually engage uh, in uh, engage in this process with uh, with thought and interests that are probably different than a majority of those on the board. And you know, and and for me, did they speak to you of how do you? It's, it's not satisfied, but when we talk about a true representation of actually uh, those individuals who are you know individuals in the community that play the lives and children. The players in the lives of children can be be different things, but that it's really that you have some of that, I guess, stark contrast, right, represented, but also the stark contrast that also allows for some uh, forward movement of, of something going forward versus, you know, there there's a group that's going to be against whatever actually the school district does. There's a group that has a different perspective on it. And so did they talk about like, did they talk about like how they ensured that mix or was it just kind of um, everybody seems to be on the same page in this particular group? Do they talk about that at all? They do not. That was, you know, and that can be a question that I go back to Tom with. Um, it was really pragmatic. I think our, our question is not so much, you know, what are the spirit? He did say that, you know, really this group has been bogged down with COVID conversations for the last couple of years so it was hard for him to even like go back and find agendas from before um but he you know gave me some examples boys and girls club ymca um boy you know girl cub scouts um he did list ministries local churches um civic theater boosters youth athletics parent group organizations um you know parent leadership african-american parents Hmong parents latino parents senior citizens groups um, police department, city of Sun Prairie, likely youth and family commission, I, you know, retired teachers group. So really just um, very diverse group of folks there from, you know, ages and stages. And, uh, and um, so I think that, you know, it, it's, uh, there was some feedback from Commissioner Farrar concern about um, ministry and church involvement. And if anyone would speak to that, Stephanie. Not really, but I, mean, I, I I do feel some concern about that because um, there are lots of uh, religious affiliations in our community, and if we start to include a particular religious affiliation, then it seems like we have to include all the religious affiliations, and then the whole thing becomes an interfaith thing, and that's not what this is. Yeah. Yeah. So it's representation from organizations that serve Students. serve children. So that's kind of, so community organization representation from community organizations that serve children and then likelihood of also those under uh, underrepresented uh, low participatory groups within our community as well. And those those would be the potential the potential the potential target. So OK, uh, that makes sense. Now. I was just kind of then our list would actually we would actually have to be a little bit more thoughtful and like do the people that we potentially want to invite are they representative of potentially these potential organizations that play a larger role so okay yeah. or you can just nominate organizations and say you know, invite them like we this is the Somebody point from of, your organization. you know so you might you know you might say Hmong PTA for example right they certainly are representative and yeah. Let them send whoever is available or wants to be a part of it in that way, uh, or or individuals. I think it sounded like I think when you and I had a conversation about once, it would keep, kind of go either way, right? If you knew of specific individuals, or if you're just thinking about groups. Yeah, could, and Tom made it sound like they they seek out you know good people from those organizations. Like he said in you know, the senior center, he was trying to find. They're still trying to find a good represent you know representative from that community. So they want that community at the table and involved but they don't have a person. So they're working with that organization to sort of um, figure out who that person might be. So, you know, I, I think that for now, what we're kind of recommending is, is if we could, you know, I don't know if we want to put a deadline on it and you guys can propose that. It doesn't matter to me um, specifically, but, and, and I, I think that five to seven is, is conservative in what we could probably all come up with um, because I, I do think that, we can get creative um, and, and just start thinking about um, 
you know, different different avenues, different ages of, of, of young people. Um, and where are those, you know, where are those connections that our families are making and our students are making um, in the community? And, and can we get a really um, exhaustive list of those organizations together um, and then, you know, narrow it down, winnow it down um, as a, as a you know, we can do that in the working group and, and kind of come back and see where, where we're at with it. But I think that's a, probably the best starting place um, for us as we're sort of working on some of the behind the scenes um, uh, logistics of meetings themselves. And this is a natural, just to say this, this is a natural, and you guys probably heard me say this before, this is what exactly what we did for the results policy feedback group. Um, these were the folks that were at the table for those conversations and the meetings that, that were led for the results policy feedback. So it wasn't quite 35 people, 30 people or 25, but it was it was a significant uh, number of folks. Sure, sir. Um, since this is, I think, the last like made like the, the, the you know kind of proposed to go forward at this point, potentially. Um, one concern I have about all of the communication plan items is just workload for individual board members. I mean, you know, we're certainly not getting paid very much to be in this position. Many of us have careers or jobs or families or. Um, so one thing I always that I think about when I think about this communication is what are we if as we go forward with these bits and pieces, how much are we adding to our own work? And I, I agree that certainly like some of that is expected, right? When you when you run for this office, you know you're gonna spend some time in schools when they invite you, you know, you're gonna attend these events. But um, I guess just for this one specifically, what what do you what is the the board member commitment or is it all the board like are we then scheduling sort of three three special meetings a year for all of us or whoever, you know, could it is it Kind of like our um, policy work, work like we've added a couple of we've added meetings for the policy workshop, and it's optional. We'd love for you to attend. Like, so what's what? What is the board member commitment on this particular item? On Sun Prairie's um, communication plan, I mean, and they articulate it very clearly, and it is articulated in the in the coherent governance text that these that these types of engagement. Uh, events should be for the whole board because they don't want to create you know now we have sure. we have we have a, an you know quorum is, issues that came up in early edits of the of the communication plan i think it got knocked down to you know three board members max would be sort of assigned to the key communicator group or it you know it could it also could be a rotating group of whoever's available it wouldn't necessarily have to be any of us assigned to it um, i just think that and, and the agendas, according to everything I read, are set by the whole board in open board meetings. So those are set by the whole group um, and, and those meetings are then, you know, held at the behest of the whole board um, with the agenda in place sort of thing. Um, you know, so it, it really could rotate and it wouldn't have to necessarily be on the shoulders of two or three people or one person. It could be on the shoulders of, you know, a rotating group of them. Um, that said, you know, I, I don't know how the board feels about about it. Um, and, you know, I don't know that we would necessarily need to commit ourselves to three to four times a year to start. Um, you know, maybe we, we just start with twice a year and see or one time and see how that feels and then, you know, try to keep open channels. Um, I think if one thing we learned during the pandemic, a lot can be done through email. Uh, and if it, if it opens channels up between between um, community partners and the school board, that's a, you know, could be a goal as well. So perhaps, you know, two meetings is enough. I don't know. Uh, but I you would see it at the at the very least as a noticed meeting and the entire board is at the very least invited i would inspect the board i would sure. okay i would defer to your guys' right. thoughts and feelings on that i mean again in sun prairie's communication plan everything is like full board does it so who operate from in, in sun prairie example who operationally does all the work between the meetings, takes notes of the meetings, makes sure there's file through the meetings. I don't know. I could find so some. I'm wondering if this is a staff person or if this is a board member or members. 
My understanding was that they had a facilitator who facilitates the conversation among mm -hmm. the attendees that is not a board member. Um, so potentially that same individual would need some of that. Do you remember if they were within district or outside consultant? I don't recall. I would that would suggest a cost potential too. It might not be very you know if you're doing two meetings a year for two hours, you know maybe it's not. It certainly isn't going to be monumental, but it is something that we should consider. And I will say that um, Mr. Weber did offer to you know to talk to us at any point if we you know just to to have a meeting with any of any or number of us um, as we move forward. I mean he said in his communication that there. It's very much a work in progress for them as well, uh, but this seems to be something that it really does seem to be the nucleus of their plan is this group. Did he talk about, and this will be my question probably for each component, but did he talk at all about what, um, what problem or problems, I guess you could say, or goals was this designed to address? How effectively was it actually addressing the problems? Um, so, and I can just read this through, and that is in the, the Word document that was included in executive content. His email is in there, um, but actually, so he says here that the, the specific agenda is set a few weeks prior to the meeting. Um, the general agenda for the year is set ahead of time, so they meet six times per year and they tie their agenda to specific pillars or components of the of their strategic plan. So we could use, you know, so some districts, coherent government districts have strategic plan and their results policy, some do not, is what I've come to the conclusion of. Um, so it says the, the meeting for a particular month will be focused on a strategic pillar, i.e. workforce or workforce development. Um, and then we tie the appropriate OE policies to that, i.e., you know, um, I guess oh, it's workforce, so that's just personnel and HR. So they talk, you know, with they hear from their community about specifically about. Yeah, I mean, I guess what I'm wondering is um, to do that work, they must have felt that they needed this communicator group to do it most effectively. Like they must have identified some problem to be able to accomplish those goals as a strategy. And I wondered if it is, is there, like, have they found that there's efficacy to this approach? Um, this is very time consuming. So what were they, they felt they were not able to do something, and now do they feel they are able to do it? Do you know what I'm saying? Um, it seems that this is the, um, they say that they do, so actually the meetings are facilitated by board members in some prairie. Um, they generally do not have administrators um, at the meetings unless they are presenting a specific topic. And he does say that they have them come. So if, if, if for example, if we're talking about workforce, personnel, human resources, they will have the HR director come and do a short presentation. Um, and then they, they link it for the individuals in the room back to the policies that they have in place. Um, and really it sounds like they ask for feedback um, related to the mon the policy and the monitoring report um, and to hear if there should be any changes, enhancements or additions or um, you know suggested uh, feedback for the next time that they're looking at that report. So I really think it's a way for them. I get the sense that it's a way for them to sort of like here you called it grass tops organizing to hear kind of from this like their diverse network through this one person um, so that when they're when they're monitoring the district, they can hear it from the perspective of the greater. Mm -hmm. I think that is my hunch is that that's the problem is that how do they organize um, feedback in such a way that it is relevant to monitoring? So they organize it around their policies and their monitoring sort of structure. Um, I, but I could I could. Um, Ask for more specifics from him on that. Yeah, I, I, I think for me, when you when you when you look at it, so it it, it began. It, 
one of the stories and one of the, 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 the criticisms uh, since I've been on the board and prior to coming on the board that, that, that still exists that we uh, as, a, as, a, as an entity as a whole don't do an effective job of actually our engagement of getting feedback from the community. And you know, I, I, when, we, when you talk about like the, the collective of, of, the, of this group, uh, you know, I, I get the efficiencies and the workload piece, but I think it, it, it also on the other side though, it's, a, it, it's an intentional act that's demonstrated to the greater the community of the level of uh, input that the school board's willing to actually uh, receive in, uh, uh, in addition to the other avenues that uh, are the other usual channels of, of interacting with the community. And it, when, I guess for me overall, as we as we continue to have this conversation is that the, it's the engagement piece where the criticism of, uh, you know, of our district where we, where we still struggle. You know, I think uh, 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 whether or not the uh, asking for surveys and how the information is reported, how the de you know, decisions are made, it's, it's really that engage engagement piece. Do we, have we exhausted all this? And, you know, I, in one of those previous previous uh, uh, slides here, you know, I, I think the, the it, it's an interesting thing about the editorial because I, I would say that uh, what was a presentation that we had by Baker Tilly is actually like the newspaper is the least unless it's actually like 60 plus and social media is everybody else. And so like, I'm not sure we abandoned actually like 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 the social media piece. I think it, it's probably like just this in, in addition to, but for me, I would see this as in addition to, especially if it's a an eclectic group that dra that draws from, you know, and the only other piece I wanted to add in, in, in this working group who's thinking about this key communicator groups from that Baker Tilly presentation, one of the things that I, I, I really found was pretty the, the the idea that he gave about actually like those those generational alumnus. Like if if we could figure out a way like like that potentially could be like a uh, like a group of, I don't know does that group already exist? Can we you know when was the last time they had the fiftieth of a uh, of like North High School? Like is there a, is there a working like is that a working group that still like maybe like locally? I I'm reminded of uh, uh, one of my colleagues who's uh, uh, also an assistant baseball coach said that you no know, memorial made that run to have like that team come back to memorial some of those individuals from that team hadn't been back since they had graduated from like high school and which you know and, and they, they thought that was actually real so that idea if that could be part of like this key communicator group of you know it's this idea that what can be maintained from the nostalgia of actually like the eau claire school district but also accommodating multiple changes and diversity that exists like now. So those those, those are my piece. I, I just really think that the, it's that engagement piece where, you know, as we've talked about this this entire time for me, it's like we I, I, I would admit we have to do, you know, a better job. Because I'll tell you my level of engagement, I'm I'm probably to the point where I, I don't need to be stopping festival anymore <laughs> or like target. So that's not really kind of how I think engagement is actually supposed to go, but in this particular form and representation, I'm like, I'm, I think I'm all good for that. Yeah, I think this is the, of all the ideas that are on that communicate, the communication plan list, this is the one that I like the best because it gets at that, that engagement, it gets at a wide variety of it. My question about, you know, the, the time, the time spent, and I think it's, I think it's good time spent, is that I want to know about this in the big picture because there's a lot of good ideas here. But it all continue, it's all additive, right? I mean, this is not, you're not going to do two things at once. You're not going to write a newspaper article while, or a Facebook post for that matter, or a, be on TikTok there. That's as young as I can do. Uh, you know, while attending the key communicators, right? You're not going to, so it, I just want to be aware as I think about what things do we want to move, you know, forward to say like, well, we're going to have, this is our communication plan right now. It has maybe only one item on it and it's key communicators. But do we, then do we think about adding in school ambassadors or, you know, I want to know, like, because it's all going to add. And at some point it becomes like, this is a lot to expect for someone to do as a, you know, a second part-time job or, you know, really a hobby. When you think about the, um, 
you know, a service, but you know, like our stipends are not that big. And how much do we ask of ourselves, but also of others going forward? So I, this is this is the one that I think that we, you know, if, if there's one that I'm ready to say we're going to do this and put it on consent for next meeting, it's this one. You know, other ones I have more reservations about. I feel positive. Oh, go ahead, I'm right. Um, I I like this, but only a little bit, and I'll tell you why. So. I like it because it, it's putting the board members out there, but that's not the same thing as the district communicating. And so we are elected officials. We are not the district. And if we really cared about it, we would have some people employed who are doing this. You know, there's no substitute for that. We are not employees of the district in that way. You know, this is not our this is not our day job. Um, so this is a way to get board members out there, but this is not a sub, this is not a district communication strategy. This is just like how can we get board members out there more? So we can make informed decisions at when we're in this place. But that's not the same thing as Mike and his team conducting public engagement in a way that it gets digested into the district's operations. I think those are two very different things. Um, and but remember that what we're talking about here as a communication plan is for us. Right. So essentially falling under like GC2 3C, right? The board will communicate frequently and regularly with residents in the community, maintaining public trust and full and open. Right. So that's what that's what I think, commissioners, are you wanted to address with this plan is our communication and our interaction as the board okay. with the public. We have the you know OE, I'm not gonna know the number right off the bat. That is specifically well, it's it's seven and eight, and we need to we're work to combine it, but it's communication and treatment. That's where we've established the boundaries and the requirements for the district. So these are we're working on two step. This communication plan is not for the district. It is in fact for the board to communicate with the public. So I think it's important to remember that you're right. This doesn't this doesn't get the district out there, but we have that monitor. We have that operational expectation that requires Superintendent Johnson and through him the rest of the district to communicate in you know at least a certain outlined broad set of ways and if we're not satisfied with that we need to operate on that particular policy this is within our own monitored policies in the gcs i think it's it, it, yeah i understand that i think that's why I'm, i would i would feel a lot more comfortable with implementation to having some evidence about effectiveness you know that sun prairie um it, is this is this just PR? I mean, and if it is, I can accept that, I guess. But is, is it effective? Does the community actually feel like they know the school board members better? Or does it does it touch so few people? You don't get a widespread impact, you know? Or how many of us have gone to meetings, you know, people are giving recommendations about you know, this or that, but they don't actually get implemented. And, you know, are they, that's part of that evidence, you know, does Sun Prairie really, when people make recommendations about OE this or, or, or whatever, they actually implement those recommendations or with what frequency? Like, how does it really, it, like it really advances the board's work, you know, significantly beyond what the board would be working alone? You know, those are the kinds of things that I'm hoping, you know, hoping for in the evidence that it's worth it, the time's worth it. I can definitely inquire with, with Tom about it. I have a few questions here for him already. Um, and just coming back, um, coming back, it, it, there does seem to be, um, at least from their experience, an administrative overlap in that. So, you know, even said um, in part of his email that they worked with the communications director of the district um, to develop community mapping of all of the organizations and groups um, that have gone you know, that have partnered with the district in various capacities, whether those are alumni groups or whatever they might be. Um, and then, you know, they can kind of bring, they have collaborated to bring some of the names forward, you know, with the communications folks with the district. And it does sound like that there is, perhaps administrators are presenting at some of these groups, but then they leave. So it's like a come, present, leave sort of thing. So it does sound like there is, but it's not, um, the administrators wouldn't be hearing the community feedback necessarily. Does that make sense? Like it is to inform the board's 
uh, monitoring of that data or of that work or of that progress. So, um, you know, but but to your point about there's no substitution, um, there does seem to be overlap. If not, it's not substitution, but it is. There does seem to be some duplication in a way because I'm assuming that any presentation that a group, this group would get, would be the same presentation or material, maybe at a you know higher level to what we get. So it certainly would be um, duplicative in that way. Uh, so uh, next steps, I can, um, I would be happy to sort of um, share, uh, and I mean, I'd be happy to summarize sort of what I'm gonna ask if that would be beneficial. Um, so just talking about uh, the agenda and sort of the work of the meeting and in between the meetings. Um, I'm going to ask him more about uh, facilitation, even though he you know, does articulate that the board facilitates that. I'm going to ask him more about what that looks like. Um, I'm going to ask him for evidence of effectiveness, particularly, um, you know, what problem or what you know issue uh, that the board has. Does this feel like um, they were solving and if it really I think I'll, I'll ask him specifically um, you know if there's a specific component of their governance culture policies that they're is this just for that is it just to fulfill that you know I have a governance culture policy that we're fulfilling or do they feel like there is um, effective communications and like how recommendations are used by the board in monitoring I'll ask for evidence on that I'll also ask for workload um, you know just how workload is, is spread out um, more clarification on how many board members attend um, and if there's rotation. Um, so I'll just, if, is there anything else that we would like? Um, I would like to know how this relates to what the district does at a staff level for communication. So I think there's some, some confusion, myself included, about what we're talking about and the, the exact purpose of this, because to me, this is not district communication. It's it's board engagement. It's not district engagement. I think we need to be very clear about that. Um, and our expected outcome should be should be the same because the, the board getting involved in doing a, a group like this is not the same thing as improving the district's communications. Yeah. So it, there, that may be a byproduct on the road, but it's the, but um, I could see that being confused both in terms of the people who are involved, but also like what, are, what are we, exactly are we doing here? Well, you know, I, I think that the, the promotion of, you know, I, I think to uh, Commissioner Beaker's point, you know, I think uh, 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 thankfully, probably in this in this era, I think your uh, board actually probably is probably a good thing, you know, in in in, 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 uh, in, in that particular regard. But I, I, you know, to Commissioner Clemens, I think you, you, your point for me, I I would view actually like that that that, that communication role of like like of of, of a district like a hierarchy. Like for me, uh, I would like to see more communication directly actually. Uh, of of the, the district leaders with teachers and staff, and then with parents and families. Now, how they extend that out to the rest of the community, that's later on. So for me, it's it's prioritized at a dis at, at a district level for me versus, you know, we are elected officials, and so as we've been told in a lot of open comments, we you know a lot of individuals have like you know opinions and perspectives. So it's that it's this opportunity to actually allow those to be shared in a more formal, uh, a, 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 a formal arena. And so I, I, I agree with your point, but I, I would view for me in terms of prioritizing from a district communication standpoint, I would like to see improvements district wide, district administrators with teachers and staff, and then with uh, 
parents and then students when appropriate, especially at the secondary level. You know, I think one of the things that I would be remiss about is, you know, they talk about uh, coming out of the pandemic. A lot of schools have actually seen a lot of improvements at, at the secondary level, especially at the high schools of involving actually students themselves and kind of how the learning experience looks like coming out of a pandemic, you know, and really taking some of those, you know, those, those, those personal aspects of, uh, of students uh, students in mind. So I, I would view that just a little bit differently, but as I see this piece, it is really this idea of like as as a as a school as school board members, do we are we are we aware of the entirety of like the concerns of a of a community as it as it pertains to it, uh, to education and what enhances that particular particular view you know because i can i know it's it, it's more easily for me to escape escape to a particular group of people who kind of share my uh my, my ideas and thought processes and like i said I, I i would i would be one of those people who would promote this for the people who continue to stop me like in festival and in target because that's not really how it's going down and i tell the people like really I, i'm not talking to you but I'm shopping for groceries right now. Like, yeah, it's not happening. So if we had, if, 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 if we had the news like that, this is, this is kind of how I see, how, how, how I see that kind of like uh, playing out, but your, your, your points will have taken, but like for me, I would prioritize kind of the, uh, the efforts and energy, uh, energies of our district leaders in terms of that communication. And I'm, and I'm pretty sure that, you know, um, Superintendent Johnson, as he, attends various uh, uh, various things, you know, has an opportunity. Um, you know, as, you know, I, I know it was uh, President Ordine talked about this is kind of his major piece. I would like to go back and just where are we in terms of like if it's if it's already somewhere this shared services thing, like can we like rehab kind of like what that looks like going forward? Does that does that no longer exist? This does not exist right now because it hadn't in memory existed anyway and so it was it was just sort of dropped as we dropped all of our committees so we but even even so the first year i was on the board i was assigned to it it didn't i was told it hasn't met in five years you aren't going to have to do anything uh you know so we don't i think it you know even if we put it on as a as a as a liaison it would be very situational in terms of you know what the what the what that is for the person that volunteers to do it or is voluntold as you remember things i i just want to chime in because what i i think so i have always viewed the key communicator group is to inform us as as um as my boss right like as, as this is the this is where our community wants us to be headed. So and if you take if you take a, an easy one might be like the climate commitment, right? That we have, a, a, you know, in our in our policy. Um, and we, if we were to present on the work that we, you know, the district has done or that we're, we're moving towards or interested in doing, and then we're to solicit community feedback outside of the presence of the administrators in the room, and then we could hear from our community about maybe things that they've done, programs that they've found, things that are working for them. Actually, we don't, we really would like to see more green space at our schools. You know, if there's like some consensus that comes out of that and we can see um, either resources in the community um, or, or focus, focus areas of, you know, these are the things that really matter to us. Then when we go back and we're trying to sort through um, you know, the monitoring and, and wow, that was really great because we're hearing that from our community too. We're hearing that, you know, renewable energy on the rooftops of our high schools, that that was huge. And, you know, that was, uh, you know, a very powerful and positive thing from, from the perspective of our community and or, um, you know, they would like more, edu you know, more education brought home to the students. You know, those types of things that as we're looking at those monitoring, we're looking for evidence of its success, being able to say, um, you know, I'm curious about this. I'm curious about what we're doing related to this because we're hearing, you know, that from our community. And I feel like it 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 funnels us as leader. It funnels us to be able to be not necessarily to say, you know, do this, that, and this, that, and the other thing, but to to know what the focus and what the concern and what the areas of of interest are, so that we can gauge meaningful success from what the district is doing out to the community. And 
and rather than Mike telling us, well, this is what, you know, this is what the community said, we're actually hearing it from the people who have, you know, elected us as, as leaders of the district. And so I feel like it, it, it gives us um, a communal sense of what we value outside of our own individual opinions or our own individual interests. Um, and it, it helps us in sort of funneling information from the community to Mike. So, I mean, what, no, it doesn't replace it, but I think that there's an, an avenue, you know, for the superintendent, you know, for us to say, this is really what we heard as a consensus, um, you know, permeable surfaces or whatever it could be, that there's something that's coming out of, of those conversations that, that does seem to rise high on the list. Um, you know, I, I think that it, there is an efficiency there. It makes us better leaders. They know that they're being heard and we can, um, you know, effectively monitor in some of those policies um, with, with knowing that we have the backing of our community. And I feel like that is something that perhaps we don't have currently. We come into all those monitoring reports with our own personal sort of networks, which, you know, from a workload perspective, it takes a lot of work to maintain those, right? Like we all have our own personal networks of people that we talk to um, in our roles, both, you know, personally and professionally. Um, but just because I have that knowledge, Josh doesn't have that knowledge and Stephanie doesn't have that knowledge. And so how can we build the capacity as a, as a whole board to be more coherently representative? of those voices. And, and that's what I feel like we're missing right now. It's disjointed, but I, you're right. Is it effective? Does it work? Do, does it actually, um, does it actually, you know, trickle in that way? I don't know, but that's what I see it potential being in a way. You know, one of the, one of the things that I was very interested in is what's the agenda and who's around the table. And I didn't get a sense when I read Tom's email that Sun Prairie really had a very good idea of who that was. As you're describing it with the climate commitment, the five to seven people that would be around the table might be very different than if you were going to do the equity commitment or facilities or student learning and what those community groups might be around those topics. I want to just inject that Tom Weber himself specifically says we don't get into operational specifics. Yeah. Their, their communication group and I think our communication group should be primarily focused around results for students. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, okay, there are some there are some process things in OE2 and OE3 that require, you know, like long term planning, right? So maybe that is that sort of a little crossover between like, you know, you've, we've got the equity plan, we've got the climate plan. Are we hitting those goals? That's a process and progress thing. But I, I, you know, I get real twitchy when we start talking about anything where we're we're getting operational specifics because that is specifically like here are the boundaries. Now I think they could weigh in on your policies aren't strong enough, and you know, like you need to change this. And I think that's one of the other things he says in his, you know, point one for our role, right? Maybe it's translating expectations into policy, and maybe some of those do come down to a policy change in the operations. But digging into the operation yeah. it should it should absolutely be put aside for for this because that is that is our commitment is to not get into the policies the operational specifics but instead focus on results for kids. I very much agree with you because that's where I was kind of going with this right. with this with this yeah, sorry to interrupt. statement. No, no. But what what Tom has is a group of I think about twelve to fifteen um, very disjointed. Uh, and you have to, if you have a group that large, five to seven, um, that's not what Tom Weber, he had, he had much, much larger group. Well, that's five to seven. Each of us would bring five to seven people, different groups. To, like you would bring five to seven names or contacts and Mark Wall would and I would. And so we would have a, anywhere between, you know, 35 and up people, oh. like organizations total as a board that we could then siphon through. That's each individual would bring that many. So board members, to, you would identify five to seven. Stephanie would identify five to seven. Lori. So he says they invite 50, knowing that 35 would show up. And I'm assuming that I'm assuming that if it's the climate commitment, a different 35 are going to show up than if it's perhaps personnel. 
I'm not sure. I find myself I'm getting a little bit more confused as we go along here. Like, so if this this is kind of an advisory committee, an advisory group to the board. So you would want to have, I think, um, like established organizations. So there would always be a representative from the Boys and Girls Club, from police department whatever you know but they're it's not individuals and it's not just groups you know like a parent group that just springs up you know it's it's organizations that have a long standing in the community and they're going to advise the board about how are how do things look from the perspective of the ymca how are kids doing or from the boys and girls club how are kids doing these days so like it's not necessarily issue specific because I have had experience on this school board when we take a specific issue out to the community. So examples would be discussion of the boundary change for North and Memorial. So really targeted, you know, is open invitation. Anybody can attend. So, you know, um, or another was um, work on the SRO policy it was a really you know, target. I'm not sure where you at that one, Tim, I don't know if you that one or that predated you or as another example of like we're working on something specific so you take it out to the community open invitation people know they're giving feedback on that policy so i, I kind of think of it differently like it would be more this is more for us to hear about what are the kids doing how are kids doing and what do we need to know to make yes. sure that the district is doing that right. you know like it we we found when we did r3 and r4 we weren't entirely certain what we needed yeah. to make sure that we could monitor it correctly and getting yeah. that extra insight from the community about how well, what should we be looking for what, what what do we need to ask that the district provides what are the big issues for yeah. you at the boys and girls club right now but I, I wouldn't go in this wouldn't be about any individuals this would just be about established groups but i'm not sure if i'm uh, how i feel about it i've envisioned it Certainly, you can think if you think of an organization that you're familiar with, you might have an idea of like, well, this would be a great person from that organization, but it wouldn't always have to be that person. I think the, 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 the challenge, though, is that the, the, the challenge, though, I think for the, the quote unquote, as, as we're using this word established, does establish also include actually underrepresentation? Are those, oh, yeah. are, are those individuals who typically choose not to partic participate? And that may they may not actually coincide with one. So, you know, I think that the, the organizations that we're using mm -hmm. examples, that's fine, but it's also in addition to, you know, especially yeah. I, I think as it as it relates to uh, 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 groups in this particular area that are still like in their uh, really, yeah. early infancy and are LGBTQIA groups that potentially find themselves on the periphery. Uh, so it would be those established and then those that uh, some uh, of us have some level of extension to, to potentially do that, that representation. And you know, I, I'm not even sure, it, is it advisory? It, it's just an opportunity just to share a perspective. And I, like, I, I, I'm not even sure it's, it's advisory. You, what, what's the what's your thought process on what the school district is doing as it pertains to the learning experiences of, of, of students? I mean, if we're all there together, it gives us that you know like shared experiences. You know, if we come in and we start asking questions on the results, you know, we've heard those things. It might be not this is a formal advisory, but we heard we've heard you know all throughout this year as we've cycled up to our two our academics that these are issues that that keep coming up at these meetings. We can dig into that a little bit better and have a, have a more shared experience. Yeah. 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 We're not overly yeah. reliant just on actually what Mike and his team potentially brings, the uh, Superintendent Johnson and his team brings sure. via, uh, you know, I think the, their own like in, internal surveys to like, you know, that particular group. And so, yeah, I, it, I, I really, like I said, I think this, this key communicator group, I really think there's a, a you know, there's an avenue there that we have to address, you know, Commissioner Clemens uh, need for the uh, uh, clarification piece of making the distinction between that this is this definitely a school board versus not actually like a, 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 a district key. So I, I, I'm, 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 I'm really, I think for me, it's that, uh, uh, but also there needs to be some level like a, a organization. I'm also not against, you know, I think the idea that it's, 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 <laughs> 
point, it's a pointed topic. It, it has to be like a pointed topic. And and, 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 and I, I'm also open to the idea, I don't know how that would work, but open to the idea that I realize depending on the topic, that the representation from the various organizations probably would be different. You know, uh, 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 you know, it's uh, 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 that, that it's probably why you say you shoot for the 50, hope that 35 show up, right? That individuals by topic, if they have something to share, potentially will will do that. But yeah, it's I don't know. The, it has to be, there has to be some level. There has to be some level of uh, structure to it. So, but you you were saying that uh, in that example, it doesn't seem like uh, they had that that level of structure as it relates to the topics that were shared. Commissioners or or yeah, I mean he just hasn't gotten those you know back to me, so I can I can follow up and and ask him for more information on that for sure. I've appreciated the conversation, but yet not but. And I, I realized that I need to stay in my own lane, like Josh, you had illustrated to start with about the, di the difference between, you know, this is something for the board, but yet the district too. And I think our executive team, we struggle, we struggle with that as well. Um, we can say, well, we, you know, we do the district update. Well, we don't read it. Well, is that our, I mean, that's just one example. Um, but I think one thing probably presently that maybe we had really good discussion. I, I really appreciate and enjoy our family advisory committee council, um, but yet we struggle with that as well. Um, and I do feel from a time and energy and effort standpoint, like every one of our executive team members, they're on different committees or they hold different committees to try to engage, whether it's families or some staff. Um, but like our family advisory council, we're looking for maybe different ways to reach more and not just about certain agenda. Well, we get the agenda items from them, which is great. Um, but I think for the past two years with COVID, it's been just a little bit different. It's been more react reactive at times, um, but there are times where we'll hold an emergency one to get their feedback on certain things before we make some operational types of decisions. Um, one thing that I've really been pleased with this past summer is our instructional framework meetings that we've had, what is it, four times uh, exec director, exec directors back there who have who have helped. We've had 65 staff who chose to do this and it's been supported by the group financially as well as from a systemic standpoint. That's really important stuff. And then we need to broadcast that when we have our uh, in-service meetings and our principals are going to need to do that too, but I'd really be interested to see how um, Tom Weber is able to what his the answers to those questions, but as well as like Brad Saren, you know, from superintendent lens, how much would that, you know, I'm trying to make some connections with the communication group where we had it flipped when I was in Woodbury. It was the communications director had held it at 10 o'clock once a month agenda was set board members were invited and they were very concerned about well we can't have more than two or three. so it was maybe one maybe two but it really looked a lot like the fact it was one person from every one of the 24 schools but you know but at least we had board members there so they were able to understand and they could ask some questions too but also it was a time for them to interact with the 24 families I don't know. It, it's this is a perfect time for us as an executive team too to, okay, what you know with seven and eight, where are we making our arrangements for this upcoming year to make it better to communicate with staff, families, students? You know, students have a voice too, but this is really important for me to kind of understand, you know, how I can support, but yet how it's different too. What you described for me is a much clearer purpose than having 35 to 50 and you got to have a topic. If you're bringing a group of folks together to listen to them and you put 50 to 35 people in a room, people aren't going to be a, the, the dialogue, the quality of dialogue that you're going to get. I just don't think I, I, I don't see it being there. 
So I think what I'm going to do is I, I would like to challenge this group to while we're getting some more feedback. Um, if this is this is OK. Um, what would be some of the topics that you as an individual board member would like to hear from the community on what specific you know result or you know piece of our policy do you feel like you would like to hear from key communicators on and what specifically would you be interested to hear from them because i think that that is something they, they set their agenda the agenda topics are chosen a year in advance. Now the specific, you know, here's what we're going to cover. That's set, you know, a month in advance or whatever he says. But, you know, that the topic list is set a year in advance. So I would be curious to know. Maybe you guys could give it some thought when you send me, um, you know, five to seven or ten or twenty or however many, you know, groups you want to identify in the community. Um, and and then Phil and Stephanie and I can kind of continue to have that. We can we can hear from you. We can hear from. Uh, Sun Prairie again um, and and see what we think about this. Does that sound like a reasonable? I don't want to give you guys homework. I'm giving you homework. I'll take homework. The only thing I wondered with this identifying the groups and so forth, I wonder if there would be a way that you know, it was more systematic. You know, for a, 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 one of us or a couple of us or something and sit down and just go through and identify what exists in the community rather than us each you know kind of bringing something i think it would be really valuable to know who your guys's connections are i think that all of us have a really diverse set of people that we know in the community it's not that it's not that we can't make that contribution but i, I think i would feel better as a starting place that i was handled systematically by one or two people for depth and breadth and representation and and then if we see gaps you know obviously of course let's so say this is an opening but um i like that better than just the shotgun to start with of just what are you know five and seven you know, i think if we have a couple of, like sit down say like this is our start list then it can come back out to the full board and say, hey, what what organizations did we miss on here? We tried to we tried to have that depth. We tried to have the breadth. We tried to ensure that we had representation from underrepresented groups via these mechanisms. And then, you know, if, then when we can tap into that. District employees are going to be important for me helping us to make a complete list. Sure. Well, you know, I, I, I think those are the, the explored. I think you, if, if you were to start at Eau Claire County uh, uh, Health and Human Services, actually it gives you a, a, a distinct list of those human services organizations. And then you bring, you know, I think you potentially like you uh, related to the county, then extensions of potentially the, uh, the what's 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 on the periphery. And then I think you 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 you'd move from there. And, you know, I think, uh, uh, you know, district staff, I think district staff probably in certain roles, uh, um, uh, uh, may be more advantageous in terms of potentially uh, those organizations. And then, you know, like I said, I think it's then it's, it is that that personal touch of, you know, who who have you uh, intentionally uh, been around. I, I, the, the, the one, I guess the, the, the one thing that, you know, as I as I read through all of this and and just listen to the discussion, I think one of the pieces that I, I, I still I I find that is uh, uh, going to be a challenge, I think, for some, if not for all of us, though, is that I think any anybody who finds themselves in a, a forward facing public role, and this is this has been criticism of, I think, administration in uh, on at the university campus, I think uh, uh, criticism of actually uh, administration within the main, and then criticism amongst ourselves as school board members is actually uh, if we're going to put ourselves out here, even doing if even the uh, school ambassador role, where I where I struggle with, like we we have to really be, we have to strive to actually be authentic in this particular approach. Uh, authenticity goes a long way in terms of really getting. Uh, 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 tangible and real feedback 
Um, and uh, uh, I, you know, I, I, I'm not sure you can. I'm not sure you can fake your way through actually kind of like. Like listening, even though you no, know, I've tried actually, especially, uh, uh, but you can't. Yeah, yeah, you have to. You have to be there. But you know, what are what are you actually going to do with this particular feedback? And that's really that's really that piece, you know. So you you have this listening session, and the next board meeting, nothing that actually was discussed with this particular group is mentioned at all. Are you going to time these meetings to be shortly before results monitoring, so that we can talk about the upcoming results policy? What should we be looking for? We can be, you can be prepared, and then you're already you're able to talk about it right at that that, that results monitoring meeting. Yeah, so if you're talking, if you're looking at two, and then then you can do some other things beyond that. But yeah, but the, but the challenge though, given our model though. That would actually require, I think, a little bit more flexibility in our calendar and how it's constructed. I don't think it. I mean, we know when R two is coming up. We know when R three and R four are coming up. So therefore, we know when we should plan those meetings. Put it a month of, uh, in advance of that. Of that, you know, if you have to re-monitor, that's a different thing. But, but we we know the rest of the year. We know when every report is coming up, barring. You know, like we had a couple of situations this first go through. I don't think it'll probably happen again. I'm sorry to put you under the bus here, Superintendent. Where you know the, we had to move it back because we had things together. So now I'm promising that they'll all be right on time. Uh, you know, but I mean, like barring some of these things where we where we can flex, but we right now, you know, you can look at our calendar and say this is when R2 is coming. So this is when we wanted to talk about. But the but the, but the challenge, and this is one of my continued criticism of of of, of the model, though. We're assuming actually proactively there's nothing that's going to cause reaction. And there's going to be reactionary issues. That actually groups are wanting to actually want to talk about and wanting to provide us feedback. And do they do they neatly fit? Into predetermined timelines and. But that's and separate from from the work that we're doing here. The part of the goal of this is not to have to be reactionary, but to be proactive. And then to work you know, when I, you know, something is uncovered. I would like, um, if we could, just because we're running out of time, I would like um, some you know specific direction. I mean, I don't know if you guys want Stephanie and Phil and I to continue to work on this, the whole co you know communication plan um, as a working group, or if there's other type of structure you would like this to go to now, because um, we have we have the key communicator group and we've got some ideas and uh, follow up. Um, we also have, you know, only broached the subject of an annual meeting, um, both uh, as a group and, and with Superintendent Johnson, um, and then the family groups roundtable, which it sounds like is very similar in structure um, to what Superintendent Johnson just mentioned, where the, uh, where the uh, board would basically have a yearly meeting with the family advisory council or something um, similar, but it would include, you know, any affinity um, group family, uh, you know, groups as well. Um, so we have, you know, there, there's quite a bit on on the table. Um, so <laughs> going back, is there is there anything that we feel ready to do? Um, right now. Are there anything that we want to discuss or do we want to do we want to schedule another work session on it? Do you want us to update um, the communication plan with some with some of the text that's proposed? Um, I would really love to know. You know, like are there two things that are st are like in consideration? You know, it seems like there's been a lot of conversation about the key communicators and that we're going to follow up more on that. Um, I'd like to know like just taking the temperature of people's attitudes about school ambassadors. I, I, I do, like I, I guess I do, I, I do that. I guess what I would have to be more intentional about, I, uh, which I, I probably should, but I'm not sure it's my role to ask the principal, can I like speak to students as well? But uh, I, I always ask, uh, uh, you know, if, if, if if you have teachers or staff that uh, have available time during my visit, if anybody wants to stop in and say, you know, have a brief conversation. Um, but I, I think I I let Superintendent Johnson know all the schools that I I'm going to, 
and uh, uh, and the principals themselves have actually principals have actually been great. All the school I I've made it to all schools except for three three elementary schools, and so uh, I I do that. Where where I wish though is that I, when you on the school ambassador piece though is like like students. And or, you know, I don't, I'm not sure like the principal <laughs> lets parents know via email. Uh, school board member Johnson is visiting actually like Memorial today if you would like to. That would be, you know, so I, I, I'm fine with the school ambassador. I, I, I think I, 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 I could I could do that. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a mandatory number twice is not that bad. So I, I, I've, I've, I've already I, I do that. So I guess I'm 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 OK with it. So. Just a little bit of a pro tip to you. I learned more in the month of May sitting with uh, Lakeshore kindergartners at lunch about student climate, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. But at certain times, whether it's a, a PTO meeting after school, you get some staff there, you get some families there. It's it's all about the timing and you know, close to your workplace or where you live. And it's. Yeah, it's um, anytime I can get out to a school, it's it's a fantastic day, but. Um, it is it, it's very noticeable. We hear that from uh, Mark Goings, the executive committee. It's very noticeable when our um, and from executive directors and principals too, when school board members are present in schools. It's very noticeable um, and very much appreciated. So just make sure your reading circle radius is larger than actually the size of the school because yeah, the first and third graders get a lot closer to you as you're showing them the, the picture of the book, <laughs> and you're giving everybody a hug. So, yeah, I, the school ambassador one for me, and then the uh, community, the communicators with the uh, clarification on that would be something I I could go. With. I hate to disappoint, but the ambassadors is the one I have the most questions about. I know you want to make progress, but just having worked with lots of different school board members, my time on the board is not that long, but I have worked with lots of different board members, and so I imagine uh, various scenarios when individuals go out into schools, and I have a lot of questions. So, I have some reservations regarding like the feeling of ownership. You know, where like these are my schools, and I don't have to care about the other schools as much, or you know, like. Uh, or the other way around that these are my schools and I know the things that are going on here. So these are the ones that I focus on. Um, so I, I have some reservations on this too. I mean, it's certainly like my policy remains. If the principal invites me to an event either at their school or a community event that they're doing and I can make it, I will go. So I'm not I'm not as concerned about the I mean, I think the workload there that you've proposed once or once or twice a year is very reasonable. Um, I, but I, I do have some like assigning specific members to just specific schools. Um, and I think I think there's some other from from inviting on the other side, right? I think many of our principals will continue to invite all the board members, but it also might be easy to just say, well, it's Erica Zur is our member. I'll just invite her because I know that she'll come. And then others of us might miss out on relationship building or being able to see that or experience those things. So I also have some questions on this. It certainly isn't like you know, I'd like us to be in. I'd like us as a as a group and as a future group, whoever those members are, to be in schools more, you know, more consistently. Because I I also find one, it's great for me, but also I you know certainly there there is that when when you're invited, right? So you're not just necessarily because it always takes some sort of effort away from the, for the principal, for a teacher, for somebody. You know, it, it diverts time, resource, if nothing else, to caring for that board member. Uh, and I would just I would just say that the thing that I, I I would challenge us all to keep in mind here is, you know, I'm pretty sure that every person in this room lives on the south side of Eau Claire for the most part. So we have, you know, we have a very select few schools that our kids have attended or, you know what I mean, or we feel comfortable or we are invited to because we're parents there. And I think what this does is it guarantees that a school board member is going to visit your school and it doesn't matter where that, you know, where in the district your school is. I mean, how many of us have been to McKinley? You know, and this would guarantee, right, this would guarantee that, um, you know, twice per year, someone on the board is, is visiting, is making an attempt and is visiting that school. Um, and so I think that that is where it it is a, it is a, an equitable way to, to make sure that we, as board members, have those connections 
frequently and are available um, visually um, and, and you know, to, to our families and to our students for whatever various events. And I think that you, again, you've got some principals who are great about inviting us to everything and some who are not and some who invite just you because they know you and some who do not. And what this does is it, it slices it, it does it and I, I hear that like it takes it robs us of our experience of like well i want to go to everything you know and i don't want to be left out but i think that um you know it, it does have um, it does have the added bonus of making sure that we are there um and that we do hit every school and that we see schools that perhaps we are not our go-to right they're not the ones that we necessarily like, oh, I know that principal. I've been there before. I'm comfortable. I'm going to. You're talking about three schools out of 21. Right. So, I mean, like you, you also may just be assigned to the three schools that happen to be closest to you. Absolutely. So shift away from that. Right. Absolutely. But I'm just saying that for future, for setting up future boards, um, you know, who perhaps maybe aren't um, the same makeup or the same type of, you know, relationships with our schools that this board has that you know board members are expected to go to schools and that it, it guarantees that we are there um and so i mean that's that is what i see this i see this as the strong foundation under under our board's relationship with our schools not necessarily the the ceiling of it does that yeah. make sense so you know that is how i have viewed this now um you know how individual board members will engage in those schools you know sure that's i don't know but we all do it anyway so you know that's a different that's a different level of conversation <laughs> um so i guess that was that's my understanding of this so that's my my sales pitch for the school ambassadors that said um we can we can just leave it there and i can wait further instructions with it I just like institutionalizing a, a certain level of expectation that is a baseline. That is not the ceiling. That doesn't mean that's the only time you visit a school. I mean, how many schools did we all visit during, um, you know, the last few weeks of school for recognition and awards and retirements? We went all over the place. We went to a million schools. It was great. But, you know, as the newest board member here, who's learning a lot about the process and the role and our structure of governance. I think it would be beneficial for us to have a baseline institutionalized practice of this is part of your role. You know, when you join the board, you learn like these are your responsibilities. And one of them is you go to this number of schools twice a year. You try and engage with that school community and you try and build relationships with people at those, at those schools. Um, and that, I mean, I think that is a community engagement effort that is worthwhile. That it's worthwhile to define it and name it, call it a responsibility. So aside from that, one thing that I think would be helpful at this point in the development of the actual plan is to start a new draft of the plan and take the things so that we have so that it can it can the communication plan can be the adopted communication plan with whatever the first item is that we act on, whether that's we, you know, bring the school ambassadors and we just vote on it and if you know passes it passes. I think it probably would, right? It's not like it's I don't think it's a bad idea. I just have some questions about, you know what I mean? And so that we can have that and then we can as we build as we finish or maybe the first thing we do is we start putting together that key communicators group and maybe it's not complete like everything we do with that but it's in there and then when we get to adding the school ambassadors that becomes the next thing and we can revise that so we have that kind of larger working text that uh you put together commissioners there and you and i worked on and then that's now been but i think a, a, a clean draft of what could be potentially coming forward adopted as the board's communication plan with the public would be helpful and whether you know it sounds like of the things that we talked about tonight both the key communicators group and the ambassadors have at least some forward motion or interest in continuing to develop just as the starting pieces 
So, you know, maybe it's one or both of those things that's in the new, and it, it, it can be copy and pasted, right? The, the language or the updates that you want in there, right? But that it's like a, this clean thing so that we could bring it forward and say, we want to adopt this piece. And then just as we you know, adopt the calendar or we adopt changes, we just did tonight to GC5, right? We can just, if, when we're ready to add the next piece, I do anticipate we continue to work on this. We should have, even as monitoring starts out, you know, we'll have a focus on results sort of segment and each meeting we'll have a monitoring piece each meeting and then we'll have roughly a half hour of open space each meeting for development items. The communication piece should continue to ongo until we feel like we have something that's like this is stable for now and we got to think more before we go forward. So that's one thing I'd like to request as a next step is, you know, can we just get a clean draft? I'd love to see it be on key communicators, but it could be both that and yeah, we, we did actually spend some time on was the city county action, and that seems the easiest to act on. And it just gets enveloped into that the liaison, you know, that it becomes one of those liaisons in, in the existing policy of GC five. Sure. Well, and that would have those people never met. Yeah, I think to it doesn't the, seem like it. So you meaningful. don't have to go to the historical representation. You can. This is the. A new proposal and then how do we activate it? But then the argument the argument goes back then I would actually use uh, uh, you know, I think uh, President Rodini's argument though is actually like the workload and then the situational piece that's relevant now because of actually referendum. That's why it's it's on our on our level of consciousness. But like moving on, the, the historical perspective matters because we when we were actually developing this governance culture piece, one of the pieces is do we need to actually add additional liaisons if we really don't have to? And that's really, that's really situational and it's like periodically. Uh, so I guess I, I would not be in favor of that. So I think, you know, Commissioner Zuri, you can actually do three instead of two. So, you know, you have some tickets for student ambassadors, some people for the shared services piece. And then I think that would be up for the next following uh, debate. So, uh, a lot of homework for you, Commissioner. Yeah. Sure, it, guys. Um, is there anything else that you would like us to, to sort of take away from this tonight? Question for, for anyone who is involved with that. So um, in presenting these opportunities to investigate further, were there things that you came across that were like, uh, this is not something we want to do. This is this is not something that we want to present. Or did you just find what a couple of districts were doing and saying, hey, I, I think there's a lot of good here. Were there things that you're like, no, because I'm, I'm just, I'm just curious about. The, in the process of creating the plan? Yes. The original draft plan? Um, yes, there were things that were I am I'm like blanking completely on what those lines were that were deleted. Social from, media. You remember. Well, we deleted social media most recently um, out of it. Um, the newsletter was deleted out. Um, believe it or not, students, um, it like it actually like board members just like meeting with students was deleted out like as like a student round table um, at one point. Um, or perhaps that that was left out in my edits. Um, for fear of it being, you know, mostly operational. Um, there, there, there were other components in various communication plans. I mean, some communication plans were solely on the calendar, like on the um, just items on the calendar, and it was more like committees that the board had that were on. Um, other districts calendars so there was a whole bunch of different things that kind of went in I would say that that Sun Prairie seemed to be the most coherent governance like a fit for what we what our goals would be um, so I would say it is the driving factor but there were certainly activities in their plan that are not in ours have been taken out by various iterations of board member involvement Thank you. Commissioner Sir, thank you for all your work. Commissioner Lyons, Dr. Farrar, thank you as well for 
uh, you know, we clearly have more work to, to keep hammering out on this, but uh, I really we all appreciate this effort because we all want to get to that place of higher engagement and uh, be moving forward. I had a couple of uh, members kind of contact me and ask just to have a chance tonight to talk a little bit about, you know, the, the and I, I we, we budgeted 15 minutes. It looks like we're going to have 11, you know, like just a chance because the, you know, we just had that in the kind of interim. We had the presentation with Baker Tilly. You know, we had a chance to hear, you know, the Baker Tilly representative's thoughts on, you know, having two questions on the fall ballot. Uh, you know, the meeting of the budget development committee immediately after, you know, it was pretty strong feeling that that our district needed to go forward in November uh, with it, uh, you know, the higher turnout with just our need to, you know, have that approval so that we can get started on construction needs that following summer. Um, and at that time, the city council had not yet you know, sort of met and heard those results or talked about it. And even in the interim time between my saying, hey, we're going to add this to the agenda, this is this brief time. And now, uh, you know, city council has, has voted unanimously to, to move forward for planning for the fall as well. So I, I just wanted to open the flight. I think, you know, there, there needs to be, I don't know that it's going to be, you know, specifically direct coordination and strategy, but I think we certainly need to be aware of the city's work and um, be in contact with city council members or something like that. And I wanted, um, because this is, of course, a voting issue for us coming up probably in our August 15th, the question uh, meeting, you know, we needed to talk about it in this format rather than you know, an email to everybody saying, hey, we might need to talk to city council. So, um, you know, Commissioner Zer, if you don't mind, you were one of the people that said, you know, I'd like to talk about this and I don't, I'd don't. i like to hear some of your thoughts about, you know, we'll, we'll need to be working alongside the, the city council, the city uh, for this fall, since it appears that we will have two, two questions on the agenda. And I don't know what that looks like or what that even means. And I, I just wanted to briefly for us to talk. Yeah. You may have more time. Our next meeting will be a full two hour work session. That'll be the only agenda item. There will be nothing else. Um, that's on August 1st. And it, but uh, so I'll turn it to you then if anybody else wants to jump in and we'll try to just cap this at nine anyway. Um, so my concern was really prior to the city's vote. And I think um, I think that what what I what my concern was was really around was um, feeling disappointed that that they that they didn't understand that you know I think I think it was very deceiving in the presentation that we would be very successful because it was very successful at a low threshold on our own at a low dollar threshold and on our own that was where we were successful and. I don't think that we did a good job of communicating to them that that low number is probably not where we're headed. We're going to that we're, you know, maybe going to need to ask for more and that, um, you know, I was concerned that we needed to do some advocacy with the city so that they would understand where we really needed to be so that perhaps we could better coordinate timing on the referendum. Um, you know, and, and really communicate, you know, why we needed to be on the fall ballot for timing for our capital projects. Um, and, you know, obviously the vote, their, their decision has now happened. Um, and, you know, my, my concern is sort of, <laughs> I guess, uh, I would say it is both uh, moot and enhanced. Like it, it's like on fire and uh, quiet now, because, you know, there's really nothing I, I believe that we can do from a, from a, um, Net, you know, networking capacity with the city other than for them to understand that, you know, that this is the, that may perhaps what they were under the impression of, but, you know, where we were going to be is perhaps not where we're actually going to land. Um, that's my concern about it. Um, and I, I did, you know, talk to a couple of city council members about it and, and they really didn't know or understand what our needs were. And I felt that, that I was very, I was disappointed in that. Um, and, and perhaps it was a missed opportunity on our part to communicate with them where we were at. Um, I don't think it came out of that meeting with Baker Tilly well. Uh, and so, um, 
yeah, that was that was just my primary concern. And so I, I just, I don't know. It's going to be an interesting, uh, you know, fall now, I think, with with both of us there at the same time. Thank you. I don't know if anybody else wants to jump in. I just wanted to have this time so that you know, these sorts of thoughts. I was going to ask you all to email the city council, but clearly now we're not. You know, <clears throat> budget development at 8.30 on Wednesday is open to anyone to listen in. Um, I think what you're bringing up is probably one of the key topics that we're going to talk about on Wednesday, and that is what is that dollar amount that we're going to ask and where where does that sit in relationship to the survey? Because if we go into this ignoring the results of the survey, you know, we need to do that at our own peril, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, I think that's a pretty good topic for one stage. Superintendent Johnson and I both got a, an email from one of our uh, leaders and our staff uh, last Thursday at, with a letter about the referendum and thoughts. I've just forwarded that to all of you. I got yeah, for it to be forwarded. So that's in your inboxes as well to consider. And I hope that the now referendum committee will um, yeah. will make sure they read that. I, I, I thought it had uh, some excellent insight and captured kind of the way that I feel about our, our referendum as well. Uh, hearing no other comments, we'll just go ahead and move to our regular debrief. Dr. Johnson, you were the third member of agenda setting at the last meeting, so if you'd go ahead and lead our debrief for the night. Yeah, so uh, as we come to the debrief part, uh, I will call on each uh, school board commissioner to provide uh, just kind of some feedback on what you think went well, things that uh, uh, we can continue to work on as a board. I'll start at the very end, Commissioner Clements. Um, I, I appreciated the kind of open conversation that we were able to have today because most of our meetings throughout the year are pretty regimented um, by necessity and we don't get to talk about uh, and we really haven't gotten to talk about issues such as this as how, how we should perform our duties to engage with the community and the, la the last Time that I can recall having a prolonged opportunity that wasn't a workshop was back when we were discussing coherent governance as a, as a concept, as a theoretical construct. So I felt a little bit like we were back there again talking about how our government's governance is intended to work and how we can try to make it work best for us. And um, so I'm glad that we were able to do that and I'm interested to see where that work takes us and you know thanks to the commissioners who spent extra extra time to do the homework to present that information for us i appreciated making i i thought pretty frequent connections back to coherent governance you know with a communication plan so that was a real strength i appreciated the conversation a lot i i appreciated some uh, individual points i liked um, or Clement's point of making a clear distinction between communication by the district and by us. And I think that we continue to work on defining those differences in roles. Um, and I, I just appreciate the conversation of um, all of our members because we all care about communicating with our community. We want to listen, we want to be available, and we're trying to figure out the best way to, to execute that. So I appreciate everyone's goodwill and attempt to do that. So uh, I, I think I would just echo sort of what the three of you have already said. I, I appreciate our opportunity and the willingness to engage in governance intentionally uh, with a focus on what we've committed, focusing on student results and how and how we're doing our jobs, how we're filling out, like, you know, being able to refer to these policies and getting back into it, I think is a strength of tonight and as we develop. Uh, I'm thankful for the books that we've been able to read. Uh, <laughs> I think one thing that that will will remain a challenge and I think it you know as as my current role as the the president um, is making sure that we continue to keep our focus on this. You know I 
maybe we didn't get as far as like even I had hoped with you know, having actionable things for it right away. Um, and I think we need to make sure that we take those now. You know, we've used our summer to do a lot of board development items and and get our work done, but be able to focus on that discussion. And while we will have you know, now the focus on results sections, you know, starting hopefully in September ish. Uh, yeah, September. Uh, you know, essentially every meeting and monitoring, we will still have that open space. And I think it's incumbent on us to make sure that, and, and me and Dr. Bika and the rotating third member of agenda setting, that we make sure that we use that extra time that we'll now have this year with not having to have the, the first drafts and, and having a, a year of this under our belt. Um, so I think our challenge is to keep our focus on it because it, I think even if we didn't get to a place where it's let's adopt A, B, and, and C, that we, that everyone, really was engaged and ready to like looking for the ways to how do we best move forward? It's just more difficult to get uh, get it exactly where we want to start, but we do need to keep moving forward. So you know, I'll accept that challenge as part of the agenda setting to make sure that it's coming back for development and that when it's ready. Also, um, this is a request outside of the, I'm sorry, on the debrief. Um, if you, when you get those info, that information back from Tom Weber, if you, you know, send that on to us right away because I'm certainly very interested in those okay. those questions as a larger. You know, you don't have to comment on it, of course, as you develop, but I would appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for the work um, on the communication plan. Uh, you know, I I know we haven't met in a while, and I'm trying to knock some of the cobwebs out of my head, but there's just a whole lot to think about in that communication approach and all of the communities and being a board member, being an individual on a board within coherent governance and, and what is it we're trying to achieve? So all of those things kind of rolling around in my head as, as we were talking about it. I think it was a great conversation. Yeah, I think uh, as, as I'm looking at the book, I think we, you know, this this whole entire discussion addressed uh, governance culture three, four, developing uh, written governing policies that address governance culture itself and the definition of the board's own work, the processes it employs, and the conditions with which we can accomplish that work. You know, I think that the community engagement plan is one of those ways that we're able to actually uh, accomplish that work and it's it, it's ongoing you know I think for me the continuous challenge is how do we how do we we, we abide by uh, an adopted culture realizing that uh, it needs to continuously be readily uh, adaptable uh, for us as we navigate, uh, navigate getting to whatever it is a, the desired place, but that's kind of for me. Yeah, I think the I think the operate, uh, you know, like the, the governance culture policies are are in in my experience when we've when we've done you know our own board self monitoring, um, those seem to be released. Really sticky for us when when they're you know it when we're when we're on the outside looking in and we're looking at you know operational expectations and we're monitoring results it's uh it's not um on us to you know to be bringing the information in and so i think that i i'm i'm really excited that we're that we're talking about our governance culture and we're talking about us meeting our own expectations of ourselves as a board and i think that that's really hard i think that's really hard work um it's hard to agree on it's hard to um to articulate it um and it's it's messy and difficult and you know we've got a very small set of policies and mike's got a whole bunch so it gives me i think it's humbled me a little bit um uh you know in in that how challenging it is for us <laughs> um and how how much we ask so i think um, you know, just just keeping those those governance culture um, policies at the forefront and and really driving ourselves to meet them um, and to not get caught in the weeds, but to to give ourselves something um, to work from um, it will be will be helpful. And always tweak as we go. I think that 
I'm excited that we're going to actually have some someday. Thank you. At this time, I would hear a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We're adjourned. <laughs>